right, the Aeropract airplane. This, we're going to go fly in this airplane and see how it flies, but let's talk a little bit about how it's built first. This is an all-aluminum airplane made in a very conventional style with uh, uh, built-up uh, I-beam type spars and so forth, all metal coverage, some fiberglass work in the usual places here, but one of the distinguishing qualities about this airplane is a large amount of plexiglass. Um, uh, Dennis told me that some people refer to it as the see-through airplane. Well, I can understand why they think that, because I can literally see right through it here. It's also, if the camera can show it or not, I don't know, but there's a, quite a bubbling to the door here, and that both that does two things. First of all, it gives you great visibility and a lot of downward visibility as well. That's great, but the shape of that door also keeps it from bouncing in and out and, and making any noises or, or banging against you. It did not move in flight no matter what speed we move. Now, of course, the windshield is going to take a little bit of a push to it when you get going higher speeds, and indeed it did somewhat, but nothing that made any noises or whatnot. Single strut to the side, no interplane struts. Uh, the airplane felt very solid throughout, however. Uh, power plant is a uh, Rotax 912 ULS with a carburation on it. Um, and as you can see, uh, the uh, seating is side by side in it. And it's a very roomy cockpit. I believe it's in the neighborhood of about 50 inches of width. Now, neither one of us are particularly big guys, but we had plenty of elbow room in there. And in fact, I could move my arm out to the side quite a bit before I actually bumped into the side. So a couple of big guys could fit in this airplane quite well and, and some pretty tall people as well. Lots of visibility. The, the uh, instrument panel interrupts a little bit of forward visibility as it does in most airplanes. But then to the side here, you might be able to see in the camera's view, the instrument panel tapers inward toward the occupants. So there's a, vision, a vis visibility down the side here that allows you to see forward very, very well. And of course, aft and up in every direction. There is no skylight over the top, so you can't see up like you can out of some airplanes. But once you're aloft seeing out anywhere in a 360 degree turn of your head, you can see all kinds of things. Uh, the gear is uh, comprised of, uh, it's, I believe that's a uh, steel gear, and it's a single uh, beam, so there's, there's no uh, cross bracing of the landing gear. Uh, it's got some large tires on it, and we uh, took off from the grass, and the takeoff rolls were very short uh, in the neighborhood of about, a, well, we had headwind today, but let's say no headwind. It'd be about 150 feet, I understand. Landing roll out is about three, 350 feet. And the landings on it were very, very simple. The controls are very, very strong. Seats are not adjustable. So what might be called the human factors of the airplane? Let's look at the seats first. Seats are quite comfortable. They're uh, good for a long time. I just flew in the airplane for an hour. It didn't seem like that. And I didn't notice the seats at all. I'm very picky about seat comfort, and I did not notice them. So that's a strong thing to say about it. Four-point seat belts, very secure in the airplane. Uh, the, since the seats do not adjust, you can use cushions. They do adjust over, but only over about a two inch range, I'm told. Uh, so that's not very much adjustment. You can make up the difference with cushions for very short people. Tall people aren't going to have a problem, but if you were really tall and you decided to have this airplane with a joystick instead of a yoke, you can have it both ways, then they actually will do a little cutout in the panel to allow tall guys to not have their knees bump in the bottom of the panel which is a nice feature. A lot of customization possible on the airplane. They've made more than 900 of these since they started. They have some other models too, and we talked about that a little bit in flight. This is the A20, A20 which is a tandem seated airplane that I have a special uh, place in my heart for. But this is their most popular model, very conventional, very easy flying. This would be good in a flight school, for example. There's just lots of good things to say about the Aeroprac, but it comes from Kiev, Ukraine, and it can't come from directly from Ukraine to the United States because they lack something called a bilateral safety agreement. That doesn't matter too much, but to stay on the right side of the rule, uh, we want to have this airplane's got to come from someplace else. Indeed, they know that, and the final assembly and the test flying of these aircraft is in Poland now. So that's new since I visited the factory many years ago, and that, saw, that completely satisfies that uh, need. It's perfectly okay for the fabrication to be done in Ukraine but it needs to be final assembled and test flown somewhere else, and that becomes the country of origin then for it. So this airplane is imported to Poland. This airplane had dual yokes in it. You can't have it with joysticks. It has uh, rudder pedals on both sides, but single hand lever brake in the center. And if you got a joystick instead of a yoke, the uh, brake would be right on the uh, joystick, I'm told. This one did not have that, so it had a breakdown in the center. 
Several uh, controls are right down in the center. I was seated on the right side of the airplane, so I'm using my left hand here for demonstration. And there is throttle with the brake right near it so that you can grab both of those very easily. Just forward of that is the trim, and there is a choke down there too for when you're first starting the airplane up. Uh, instrumentation in the airplane, he will, uh, Dennis will customize it pretty much any way you want. This particular one had a number of analog gauges in it, and then he used a tablet for uh, uh, GPS as well as a Lawrence device to get some additional uh, information because he's used to that piece of equipment from his boating days. And uh, as far as the steering on the ground, it was very responsive steering. It's a direct linkage nose wheel steering. Uh, it was very responsive. And, and on landing, uh, the braking is uh, something you hardly really need to use because it comes in so slow and touches down very nicely. But it's an easy thing to just kind of reach your hand forward a little bit and grab some uh, brake with the handle. So the last thing to cover inside the cockpit is the flaps, which is directly overhead as, as if I was reaching up here. And you can reach those quite easily uh, from either seat. Uh, you pull toward the passenger side or the right cockpit seat and then down for one notch, pull again and down for two notches and back the reverse process to get it back up. You do use a single notch of flaps for takeoff typically and you use two notches of flaps for landing and the airplane approaches at a nice slow speed so you could land short and on soft fields very easily. It's got basically stole characteristics. It may not look like a stole airplane, but that is basically how it behaves. So the takeoffs and landings are very straightforward and easy. More information about the airplane you can get at AeropractUSA.com. That's the name of the US company, Aeropract USA. You can find more about this airplane and all kinds of affordable aircraft on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at the Midwest LSA Expo for this video pilot report on the Aeropract A22.